Hey friends, hello, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. I see a lot of friends popping in, super excited. Okay, today I have a really fun card project that we're gonna share, but we're gonna focus a little bit more on watercolor with watercolor pencils. I know I've done some extensive tutorials on this channel with watercolor pencils, but since we're like in the last bits of summer and we're easing back into the regular lives and I finally have solved some of these tech issues that I hope aren't going to pop up today, we're just going to just kind of ease in today, do a little strawberry picking with my um, brand new stamp set with Gina K Designs called Everyday Amazing. So I'm just gonna pop over and take a look at the comments. We've got lots of friends that have popped in. Kathy, Dawn, Cheryl, Judith, Michelle. Hey everyone. Ooh, Michelle, hey fr hi from Florida. I hope you're I hope all is well. Um, I know that the uh, hurricane is hitting Florida right now, so hopefully all is well. Hi Denise. It's good to see everybody. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. We're just going to get to it. I'm going to talk about some watercolor pencils today, talk about some of the differences, and just kind of do a little bit of a tutorial with watercolor pencils. So let's go ahead and head to my down camera. Hi, Catherine. Yeah, watercolor pencils. So many of you have been with me before when I have done a few more in-depth tutorials about watercolor pencils. Today, I'm going to be using the Albert Durer pencils, water, the watercolor pencils. These are from Faber-Castell. You can use, I have lots of different watercolor pencils. These are the ones that I absolutely love because their color payout is super intense, super duper vibrant. Um, there are lots of different watercolor pencils on the market. If you have questions along the way, maybe about the watercolor pencils you have or a specific brand, I guarantee you, I have the nerdy base knowledge to give to you about them. So pop them in the comments, put a little Q next to it, or question or QQ, just so um, I kind of see that really super quick. So Michelle just said, we are good. Um, the hurricane just missed us. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, Michelle. I'm glad that you're safe. So any of our other friends that are in Florida, um, who may be watching, which maybe not. Um, I hope all is well. I hope all is well. We are entering hurricane season and stormy season, so um, be safe out there. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to head to my overhead cam, which, with if you were with me last week, I'm using my pencil like a pointer. If you were with me last week, we talked a lot. I had a lot of tech issues. I think I've solved them. I did two lives last week. So there was a live later in the afternoon where I did a really bad painting of a sunflower. Um, and many of you joined me. So I think I solved my tech issues. So let's go ahead to our overhead cam and let's just kind of dive in. So last week we were having some issues with everything kind of blurring out. Okay, now the... The supplies that I have are linked down below in the description here over here on YouTube. If you are watching this on Facebook, I will get those over there. Um, it takes a little more finagling to make that happen. But here's the stamp set that I'm using. I'm using Everyday Amazing. This is my brand new stamp set with Gina K. Now, I know many of you are Gina K are here because you follow me with my Gina K stamp line. The Gina K website is down for a couple days, and if you're on her email list and if you're in the group, you have, you've gotten this information. It's down because she is coming back up live before Labor Day with a brand new website, and it's been a long time coming, and I know it's been a lot of stress. So just keep in mind that the website's down for a couple days. It should be, I think it's coming back up tomorrow, to be honest, um, September 1st, but Here's the latest stamp set. This is Everyday Amazing. You can see that mine is like super well loved. We have all these elements here to do our strawberry picking. Um, I am using some cherry red cardstock today, cut to an A2 size. I have my favorite watercolor paper um, on the planet for using for our um, paper crafting projects, and that's the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. 
Um, the inks that I'm going to be using today, I've got, I don't think I'm going to be using the amalgam, but I have obsidian here. I have grass green and fresh asparagus. Can you not read that upside down? There we go. Grass green and fresh asparagus. And I'm basically using inks today for, um, for coloring. I have innocent pink and cherry red, and I actually don't even think I'm going to be using innocent pink. <laughs> but I do have wild dandelion. Okay. So here is, hello Phyllis. Phyllis just jumped in. Here is the here is the inspiration for today's card. Last week I showed you, I showed everyone how to make this patterned background, this double layered patterned background. And I've made it again for today in the wild dandelion. So I will go, I can go over that again today, how to make it, but it was the really beautiful and unique thing about this stamp is that you can create that pattern and then you can do it again. You can just, and you can go it all the way across your cardstock. So here is the inspiration for the card. This is another card that I made using watercolor and watercolor pencils. And we're going to focus on this today. We're going to focus on some of the watercolor pencil techniques to create these out stamped elements for our card base. So Let's just dive in. Okay, let's dive in. Let's move our cards. Let's move our card base. We've got our card stock here. Okay, so this is the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. And here are the watercolor pencils that I'm going to be using today. I've got three different reds. Hi, Debbie. We just had Debbie popped in. Three different reds here. This is a permanent carmine. So this is more like a middle pink red. This is a rose carmine. This is a pink. And this is a dark red. I've got two different greens here. A pine green and a leaf green. And then I've got a little bit of this light yellow glaze for pop. So I'm going to come in and let's talk about um, layering your watercolor pencils to get these smooth like textures, okay? Smooth, smoothie drawings. The really fun thing about watercolor pencils is that, I'm just checking my pencils here, is that you can get these really beautiful watercolor techniques. I'm going to come in a little tighter here. You can get these really beautiful watercolor washes. You see these watercolor washes here with, that, with a lot of control. We have a lot more control when we're using our pencils. So I'm going to come in and just kind of show you. I'm using this little um, pencil sharpener and just kind of sharpening, making sure some of my tips are a little sharper than they are. Normally I would run them through a bigger sharpener, but I just realized like right before we went live that I didn't do that. So I'm just going to run this through the sharpener real quick. And this is just you know, a regular kind of sharpener. It's made, this is an Alvin. I think it's more like for drafting, but you can use whatever kind of sharpener you have. Okay. Now I'm going to turn my paper sideways and just kind of talk. No, I'm going to turn. Yeah, I'm going to turn it sideways and talk a little bit about layering colors to get these smooth, smooth washes. So that's what we're focusing on today. I'm just going to write this down here. Smoothie washes with our watercolor pencils. And then we're actually going to do some stamping and coloring. So I like to hold my pencil out here towards the outer edge. When I I'm a lefty, as many of you know, when I hold my pencil really super tight to the tip, I tend to be a little more aggressive and scratchy with how I apply the color. When I hold it out a little bit, I have a lot of control, but I also am a little bit light, lighter handed and I'm using the side of the colored pencil here. So I'm just applying that color just back and forth in kind of just a light um, back and forth here. Now remember the more you apply, 
See how you, it's just like working with color pencils. The more you apply, the darker you can get. Now I'm going to come in with the um, with the permanent carmine, which is the second color. And I'm, what I'm doing here is applying these colors together and just kind of to create that wash. And I'm doing it sideways. You can see it right here. I did it this way. You can see the three colors, the dark red, the middle red, and then the pink. I see more people popping in. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Janie. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm just going sideways. So you see how I can get a nice application of color from the side of the pencil? If you are choked up on the pencil and you're coming into the tip, you, you might have a tendency to scratch the fiber of the paper, um, at least because I'm pretty heavy-handed. So this is a nice way to get a nice graduation of color without being super heavy handed and you can kind of control this. We can add more color to it. So I'm going to go ahead get my little, I've got a little brush here, number three. And I'm just going to come in and just activate that pencil. So you can see, let me grab my, um, need a little bit of paper towel here. You can see that these Albert Durer pencils, these are like these are my favorite watercolor pencils. Look at that color payout. It's pretty intense. And you have a lot, I have a lot of control and I'm literally able to create a lot of, get a lot of paint. Look, I can even pull from there and use this. There's a lot of pigment in those pencils which I find really, really nice. So I'm able to get a really nice um, graduation of color here. And I can actually go over it. I can play around with it a lot and make it move. But you can see this, grab, this color right here, this wash that I did earlier, is completely dry. But watch, I can go back over it once it's completely dry. I can go back over it and get another application of color over top of it and really intensify that color even more. Just kind of going back and forth there. You can see how dark it is. And if I add a little bit of water to it, I can make that color move and I can get a really nice, I can intensify that color even more. Just taking a clean brush just kind of showing you how far out I can go with that color. Ah, love it. Okay, now look at over here. I kind of made this bloom a little bit by adding some water to it. So um, I can go back in, like this is starting to dry. Once this dries, I can go back in and add some more color. So this is the way to get a really nice smoothie blend. And why I'm sharing this is because you can, we're going to use our watercolor pencils to layer up color when we go to color um, our strawberries. So I'm going to do it again here with the green. I'll start with the dark green. I'll go this way this time. I'll hold it this way so that you can see, but you can see I'm holding it out pretty far so that I can get that side. That point is very, very pointy and I don't want it to, I don't want to scratch the fiber of the paper. So I'm just getting a nice even wash, not a wash, a nice even application of the color. So you can see it's pretty even. If I want it to be more intense, I could turn it the other way and add another layer over top of it, very much like you would a colored pencil. And I'll come in with the this leafy green. Is this leafy green? Yep, leafy green. I'll kind of go down this way. Come across. Get another application. And I'm letting these colors kind of bleed into each other. And I'll come in with my yellow. This is that light yellow glaze. Looks like I got a little bit of a mixture of another color on there. So I'd love to hear in the comments if you all have used colored pencils before, feel intimidated by colored pencils. I know I share them quite a bit. Like we did that whole fruit series back in um, 
like November where we were doing colored pencils and watercolor pencils. Um, November of last year, right before the holiday season, we did a bunch. I did a lot of more intense videos about it. But I've just been starting to get back into using them. And I like to use watercolor pencils in conjunction with colored pencils. But I feel like watercolor pencils are a lot easier to manipulate. Sometimes watercolor pencils and Gamsol make it a little more difficult to manipulate. So here's one of the here's one of the telltale signs of having a really good watercolor pencil brand. You're getting these super smooth washes. You get an intense amount of color payout. Um, there's a lot of pigment here. You can see there's a lot of pigment happening. And it, and there wasn't a lot of application of color of me putting it down. So that's one of the things. Um, I see Debbie says she hasn't, she hasn't tried using them yet. Cheryl just said, I love using the H2O, pen, H2O pencils, but I'm learning so much more in new ways with the inks. Yes! Just another way to create that watercolor effects. Um, all right, so I'm going to come in. This is dry. Remember how I made that kind of bloom? We'll see how I can go back in and add some more color over top. Do, 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 do. Kind of come in and get my smoothie wash back. Love it. I love it. I think that, um, um, I think that using watercolor pencils is a great kind of gateway into using watercolor paint. And I know I've shared that before because it gives you that control. And sometimes watercolor is out of control, right? Watercolor paint only goes where the water is. You can see that with the watercolor pencil, it's only going where the water is. But you have a lot more control because we are very much used to using pens and pencils and very much used to having them in our hands. So Catherine just shared, I love the instruction that's just not how far back you hold the pencil, but that we're using the side to help transfer that color. Yes. When we use the side, you're able to kind of leverage a little bit more. You get a little bit less of a heavy hand but you can get a more intense application of color when we're using the side. Um, and you're not gonna scratch the fibers of the paper. So I'm kind of going over this little swoosh that I did earlier to just kind of show you and see how I can get a really, a much more intense application of color just by holding this out a little bit further. And you can see it's almost super opaque. Like you don't see much of the paper anymore. But this is a great way to um, get that smoothie, smoothie wash. Okay, I'm going to add, look at that payout. Look at that payout of watercolor pencil. The Albert Durer's, the Faber-Castell ones. Now Faber-Castell has lots of different versions of their pencils. Like a couple different brands. Look, they have a Goldfaber. They have a couple different versions of their pencils. And you really just kind of need to test them out to kind of see which ones you like the best. The Albert Durers are the ones that I have used for years. And because of that, look at that, that intense color payout that just I feel like is so worth it. So worth it. Kathy just shared, I have these pencils. Nice tip about scratching the surface of the paper. Yes. So, and I'll show you. Watch, I'm going to turn it this way. So here's my tip of my pencil. If I choke up on the pencil and I'm coming in pretty tight, like I physically have to remember to back off a little bit. I am heavy handed with my left hand. So my inclination is to kind of come in really, really intense and that tip is pushing into the paper. Now it's beautiful and it works but it's taking me a little bit more to kind of blend that out a little bit and if I'm going for that smoothie wash 
I want I want a nice application of color, but I don't want to be see that line right there. I don't want to be fighting some of the fiber of the paper. You can see that line. I'm going to push that away a little bit so that you can see that indentation right there from me going in with my heavy hand and being choked up. That's harder. I can that's going to be a harder line for me to make disappear. Okay, so doing this method helps us create that more of a smoothie, smoothie wash. Okay, I think we've nerded out a little bit on the smoothie wash thing. We're like 22 minutes in and all I've done is watercolor pencils. So, hello Monica, good afternoon from Germany, welcome. Great to see you. Okay, we're going to move on and we are going to stamp out some of our images and have some fun and do some watercoloring. So we're going to do some of the leafery. We're going to stamp out these two big pieces of leaf. We're going to do two big pieces of leafery, two small. We're going to do one big water watermelon, excuse me, one big strawberry, one small strawberry, and do some layering. We're going to do it all right here on our watercolor paper. We're going to use the inks. What do we got here? Let's see. I'm not so concerned about my tails. Let's do fresh asparagus and grass greens. So we're going to start with fresh asparagus. And I'm not so worried about my tail because I'm, I'm going to cut that off. So I'm just going to stamp my fresh asparagus down twice. And I'm probably going to be fussy cutting these, friends. Um, there is a coordinating die stamp die set, but I am going to be fussy cutting these because I want to get a little bit of a closer effect. So I'm going to stamp these a little bit at a time and then we're going to do a mix of utilizing the ink that's here. So see how I'm just going to let my brush touch that ink very gently and it's going to make a move. Okay, just letting it touch that ink. I love using fresh asparagus as a watercolor ink. I actually have it as a re-inker. I love it because the undertone of fresh asparagus in the Gina K line is yellow. There's an undertone of yellow in there, and I just love it. Now, we're going to, for the other side, these these, these two pieces of leafery and the smaller leafery, actually the entire set of leafery in here, these three pieces, I intentionally designed them to be graphic. So we have our lines only going on the one side. So it just kind of gives us some opportunity to do some really fun techniques with both sides. So I'm going to use some pine green and going to just start to apply some of that color. So you can see I'm using the side of the of the color here and just getting a, a little bit of an application of color. I'm going to blend these two greens on here. I'm just going in, coming around here. Do, 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 do. And just get some of that color in here. While I'm doing this, you see how I've got that going? I'm going to come in with a little bit of the yellow. And I'm going to intentionally leave some white in here. Let's just kind of move. So far we haven't had any tech issues, friends. I'm excited. I think I've solved my tech issues. Now occasionally we'll have some lighting issues, but you know, weather. So I've got that application of color in there and I'm going to leave it be. My little green, I'm going to need to kind of sharpen this up a little bit. Sharpen this up a little bit. Okay. Hmm. It's not sharpening it as much as I'd like, but okay. We're coming around here and I'm just getting that nice application of color. It's, we can still see some of the white of our watercolor paper and that's good. Love it. But I'm just focusing around the outer edge of the piece of leafery. 
because we're gonna blend these two colors together. See how I'm just gonna come in to some of that pine green with the leafy green. Is that what this is? Yeah, leafy green, which is more of like a yellow green. And I'm gonna utilize, leave some of that white there. Resist the urge to like color it all in, okay? Clean off my brush, get it nice and wet, juicy, and I'm just, just kind of tap, tap, tapping. I know you've heard me say this before. Instead of like doing these long brush strokes, I'm just kind of going in and tapping the pigment. Just tapping and letting the pigment just kind of separate. Tapping and just tapping the color all around. Oh, I'm loving that. Just kind of tap what's here and use what's here. Use the pigment that's here. So if any of you, many of you use colored pencils too. This is like the same technique I would recommend for colored pencils. And if you're new to the channel and you want, I have a lot of videos back when we were doing our fruit series where I did some other things with watercolor pencils. Uh, with color pencils, similar technique. I'm liking this this um, like contrast of color. We've got this yellow green going on over here, and then we have this like darker green, leaving a little bit of the whites here. It's just kind of fun and whimsical, but super simple. Like not a whole lot of crazy going on with these technique. Not. This is not like super intense. It's just this me tap, tap, tapping. Tapping out the color and just letting the water and the pigment do its thing. And this is one, one way that you can tell if the watercolor pencils that you have are highly pigmented and <clears throat> not super chalky is when you touch the pigment with water it explodes, right? It's exploding out. That texture is, there's a little bit of that granulation that's still there, but that texture starts to disappear. The texture of our actual application of color starts to disappear and we get paint. And this is a very, very controlled way to watercolor. I'm digging it. I'm loving, like, we've got that variation of color. It's got that watercolor look. We're going to leave it. Okay. Jennifer just said, thank you for explaining pencil pressure. I could never get rid of the scratch lines, though it was the fault of the pencil not reacting to the water. Thought it was the, thought it was the th fault of the pencil not reacting to the water. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer, it, it isn't. It has a lot to do with the pressure, like I said, and trying to get rid of that line. Like, I'm going to even show you. I'm going to come back. Look, that line's still there. I'm never going to be able to get rid of that line. And that has everything to do with the pressure of my um, pencil. That's why I do that application on the side. Okay, now I'm going to come in with the greens, the other piece of leafery. And we're going to do grass green with this one so we get a little bit of a variation of color. I'm going to stamp that twice. Make sure I leave some room for my strawberries. So we do a little strawberry picking. I was just over last night. I have a friend. My friend was, um, she's away on vacation and she asked me to water her plants while she's gone. She has an absolutely beautiful garden. Just going in and just kind of taking the tip of my brush and getting some of that watercolor, that grass green to move. So she went on vacation and I'm watering her garden and she has a beautiful strawberry plant in her garden. That's just gorgeous. And I was admiring it yesterday. There was a few strawberries in there, not quite ready to be picked yet. But um, 
they're just absolutely gorgeous. Now, we use the darker green and the lighter green, and we've got that yellow green going in this leafery here. But look at that contrast that we have going for our overall design. This, These two pieces of leafery, I'm going to come in with just the leaf green and just come in with a little bit of that. Just getting a nice little application. You see I'm holding it out here on the side. And I'm just going to apply some of this color in here. Judith, Judith just shared. I like the tap tapping. I would have pulled my brush from top to bottom. Yeah, you can totally still do that, Judith. But I feel like the tap tapping also gives you some of this additional look and feel of texture. So it's a little less smoothie. So like here's our super smoothie blends. And this is me dragging my brush from top to bottom. But that tap, tap, tapping in our stamped images helps create a little more texture and dimension. It breaks up the pigment of the watercolor pencil, but also leaves us with a lot more texture and dimension. Okay, I've got that application going. I'm going to clean my brush. How are we doing on time? We're doing good kind of nerding out a little bit today with our watercolor. Tap, tap, tapping. Watercolor pencil. So, now I've tried lots of different brands of watercolor pencils. And, you know, there's a lot of great watercolor pencils out on the market. Some of the differences, like I said, some of the differences that you'll find are the pigment. It's the pigment load. See that little scratch? I scratched a little too intently into the paper there. That part of the paper was wet. So that little scratch there is not going to go away, but that's okay. I'm going to leave a little bit. I'm going to let these be just kind of yellowy. Now, if you want, just like with watercolor, if you have an area that you want more white, you just kind of go in and pull some of that color away. Kind of scrub it out a little bit. See how I can get that white back? Just by pulling some of that color away. Mm. And we're just going to let that go. <laughs> Cheryl just said, I love it when you nerd out. I, I Sometimes I just, friends, sometimes I forget, like, when I'm like, I have an intention when I start of all the things I'm going to talk about and how I want to go about it. And then sometimes it just gets super, super nerdier. Like the nerdier I get in, the more I get into it, the nerdier it gets. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of cherry red here. I'm going to stamp out our strawberries. I've got my big strawberry. And I'm going to clean this off. Now the cherry red from Gina K is super staining. So I'm going to do one at a time here. I'm going to use a little bit of that cherry red. See how I can get that color to move. It is one of my favorite reds ever. I'm going to get that color to move a little bit. Just kind of come around. I'm doing a very light wash. Then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to come in with my little baby, and I'm going to use the Innocent Pink for this one. Just going to ink that up, stamp that out. It's very, very light. Very light. <laughs> Everybody's kind of laughing, which is kind of funny. So, you know, I have this intention. This The Innocent Pink doesn't blend out as much. It's a very, very light wash. You can see it here. Now I want to come back, make sure that's dry. I also have the fan going in my um, in my office here, so it's kind of helping to dry things off a lot quicker. Now we're going to come in for this strawberry. We're going to do a mix of my dark red and my permanent carmine. So these these two colors are like my traditional strawberry light -like colors. Um, and we're going to do the same thing that we did for our leafery. Look at that hard line right there in that piece of leafery. That's because the paper was wet when I went in with the pencil. And now I'm never going to be able to blend that out. Okay, 
Debbie just shared, do you recommend using watercolor paper? Absolutely. So using, using watercolor pencils on a paper that's not watercolor paper is going to give you super scratchy results. So um, Debbie, in case you missed the beginning, this is my favorite watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. This is Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. It's my favorite paper for paper crafting projects. It's affordable, comes in a five by seven block. There's 20 sheets. I kind of order just a ton of this stuff and um, I like it a lot for my paper crafting projects. All right, we're gonna go in and just start applying some of this color. This is my darker red. And once I've got that outline of that cherry red, but I'm not super concerned about that outline. It is definitely gonna bleed and fade away as I activate this pigment. So let's just go in. We're gonna add a nice little application of that cherry red. You're welcome, Debbie. And then I'm gonna come in, just kind of around. I'm gonna leave some of my whites. And I'm just kind of flipping this around, coming in with my permanent carmine. We're gonna get a little mix of these two colors. And I'm just doing a very light application. And I'm gonna come in into some of my red a little bit. You can see I'm just kind of going into it a little bit. I'm not worried that I went outside the lines either because I'm gonna hand cut these pieces. You could use the die. Now we're going to tap, tap, tap this out. <clears throat> now, depending upon how much water is on my brush, um, I'm going to get these blooms kind of happening, which is super fun. If I wanted more smooth, remember you would go back and forth with your brush. But because I'm really just activating that pigment, and I'm just doing this tap, tap, tapping, can start to see that this line, the outer line, is going to start to disappear, but the tapping is giving me more texture in my design. I'm just going to come in right here, and I'm just going back and forth between getting clean water and just kind of um, blotting it off a little bit. This brush holds a lot of water. And I kind of want to control it a little bit. Remember, the more water, the more um, you're going to be able to smooth out that pigment. And you get these blooms. Look at all these beautiful blooms that are happening. And I've got that, I've got that like white spot right in here. I'm going to clean off my brush really good. Then I'm just going to tap and just let the pigment that's around this area just kind of fill in that space. See how I've got that variation of color happening? You can still see some of the white from the paper coming through, which is beautiful. And the water, the more water I have in certain areas, see how it's pushing back some of that pigment? But we've got a real natural look here, like a bumpy, lumpy look and feel. And that's what you're going to get. That's what a strawberry looks like, right? It's kind of bumpy and lumpy. So we're going to let that dry. And we might be going back in and adding a little bit more color. We might. We might not. All right, I'm going to come in with these two colors now to do the smaller one, the permanent carmine and the rose carmine. This is tiny, really tiny. So I'm just going to come in. And it's just kind of, since we're creating all of these stamped images as embellishments for our project, I'm just going to come in just kind of following my line. This rose carmine is an exact match um, to innocent pink. So let me flip that around. Rose carmine is an exact match for innocent pink. Um, just super beautiful color kind of choked up a little bit too much there and I can feel myself trying to not be aggressive with the brush I mean with the uh, with the pencil okay I've got kind of went around a little bit I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color like right in this area See, I'm just kind of going around in that circular motion then I'm going to see I'm not going to put anything right there yet let's see what we got 
All right, clean brush. Just kind of start to tap this out. Now this tapping, look at how quickly the pigment in the pencil gets released. Just tapping that little tiny bit of water there. Oh, I'm loving this, loving it. I'd love to know, and pop it in the chat, if you use watercolor pencils, what are some of your favorite brands or which ones are you using right now? Look at my, my outer edge of Innocent Pink has completely disappeared. Gown. Just kind of tap, 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 tapping. I'm going to let that dry. <laughs> Gloria, thank you, sweet. Thank you so much. What a great lesson today. So see how this is dried? And we're going to let that dry. We're going to come back in and we're going to add another layer of color just to get a little more happening there. I'm going to come in. We want to make sure it's completely dry, but we've got all that texture and you can still see some of the granulation in the pigment. I'm going to add another layer of this color just right over top because I want to get a little bit more intensity. Just add a little. So you can, just like with colored pencils and you, doing some layering or just like you've heard me talk about glazing and layering with um, with watercolor paint same you can do it with watercolor pencils Michelle just said shared that she mainly uses um, ink tents oh Michelle I love ink tents I absolutely love it and I've done a lot of tutorials on this channel with ink tents. So I would say that the Albert Durer pencils are my favorite watercolor pencils, but ink tents are like next level, like totally next level. Debbie shared that she just bought a, Prism, a set of Prismacolor, like Prismacolor. So here's some tips for Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Sometimes they break apart when you're um, using, when you sharpen them. So just be mindful, like not to put, like if you have a sharpener where you're pushing them in, just be careful how you push them in because sometimes the tips will break off. Um, be careful with, with them, with dropping them because the, the pigments, the pigment, or sometimes breaks and then that's what happens like you end up getting a little bit of breakage when you go to um, sharpen them and that can happen with a lot of watercolor pencils or colored pencils um, Dawn said seems like this paper dries very fast is it because the paper's cotton it does dry pretty fast I also have a fan going on here in my office to kind of speed up some of the drying, but the 100% cotton paper, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little more color to, to the smaller one, doing just getting an application of color with that, with the pencil. And I could leave it. I don't have to go in and apply water to it. The 100% cotton paper, but I'm going to, has all the fiber, so it takes in the water and it asks for more. And it does help, like, I do have that fan going, so it is kind of helping. Um, it is kind of helping with the drying. Now look at that color. We did our second layer. We've got a lot more of intensity of color there. I'm loving that. Um, okay, we're gonna leave the, we're gonna leave these the way they are. I'm gonna take the, um, the stem and just go ahead and stamp that out onto our watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna take my brush and just gently touch. I intentionally designed the stem to have a little bit of, you can see it's got a little bit of built-in white. I'm just gonna, I'm adding a little bit of water to this just to activate it a little bit, get it going. Okay. <laughs> Dawn said, good to know about the fan. And Mary said she just wanted to play with the reds. Oh, these reds are just gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. Permanent carmine, rose carmine, and dark red. Just love them. So it's a, a dark, darker red, a middle red, 
and then like a um, light red. Just love it. Okay. Cheryl says, I've used a variety of Goldfaber, uh, Faber-Castell, Karen Dosh. Oh, Cheryl, I have the Karen Dosh ones too. But I I really like the Albert Durers more than the Karen. I have a whole set of Karen Dosh. And it's funny because um, I must have put them away. I put them away in my basement. Um, and I just found them. We're renovating our basement right now. And I just found them the other day. And I evidently just stopped using them. The Ulta New Woodless Colored Pencils. Yep. So there are a lot of brands of colored pencils in our paper crafting industry. And, you know, I would encourage you to try them out and test them and see if you like the color payout that you get. All right. Now, there is a coordinating die set that goes with all of these pieces. But I am going to hand cut these pieces because... I want to get right to the edge of my um, of the piece, of the embellishments that we've created, and I'm going to cut the stems off. So you can see I'm just kind of trimming around, and I'm not going to go back in. We're just going to cut right around the edges. I'm just following the edge. You can see I'll be able to cut these out pretty quickly, pretty easy going shape. And, you know, sometimes I like to do the fussy cutting because I feel like it's kind of therapeutic for me. And I can get that right to the edge of the design. Whereas the dies will give you a little bit of a white edge, which I love too. But for this one, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something different. Okay, so while I'm cutting these pieces out, we'll just have a little chat. Last week, I did two lives. So I did a paper crafting live, and we did a card. And then I did a watercolor um, painting, like an hour later when I was solving, maybe two hours later, when I was solving some of my tech issues, which uh, they haven't come up at all today. Everything seems very clear and not blurry. Pull out just a little bit. Um, so I think I finally got the new cameras completely dialed in. So I did like these two lives and I had a little bit of a chat about some things that are coming up this fall. So I'll get into that. Dawn just shared, I love to fussy cut too. Catherine, can you ask Gina K to make dies that go right to the edge instead of, in, instead of having the white border? Um, yeah, we've discussed that. So there's some technical things that are related to that kind of design. And um, yeah, we've talked about that. So that might be kind of happening. I've experimented with doing that with some of my designs. Um, that may be coming out next year. So, okay. But thanks, Catherine, for that reminder. There's also, like, some, some specific technical things that you have to do when you're designing. I usually have mine cut pretty tight or pretty close to the edge with just a little bit of a white. So we can't control how much white edge we put on things when we're designing it. And each illustrator um, kind of controls what she wants for her stamp set. So I'm experimenting with some things. So Okay, so just a little while I'm cutting these pieces out before we assemble the card, a little quick chat about some things coming up this fall. So lots of fun things. Um, there are many of you that are here with me today. I know that you're on my email list. So if you're if you're new to the channel or you're new to my lives, I would encourage you to, to jump on my email list. That link is in the description. And that just kind of gives you a heads up of all of the things that are coming. I send an email out once a week. And that gives you a little bit of a heads up of all the things that are coming, when new releases are happening, um, every month and all of the freebies that happen along with that. 
Cheryl just shared. Love your new tech equipment. Me too. I was just looking for ways to try to get. This is another part of like some things that I've done this fall or this summer. I've been working on was getting some new tech equipment so that um, it felt more like you were in the room with me live. Um, and just kind of improving some of those things. Cutting out my strawberry here. Um, hello, Irma. Welcome. All right, I've got all my pieces. I'm going to do uh, two more stampy things that we're going to do here. Um, I'm also making some changes to uh, some things. If you've, many of you know that I have an online shop, indigojadeartshop.com. Indigojadeart.com is the website where you can find all the things. But I'm going to be closing my online store this November. So this October and into the holiday season, I'm going to be running like a sale, kind of a significant one, um, because I'm going to be closing my online store. I may be moving my store to back to Etsy. I may not. I have a lot of things in my shop. But what I've noticed is that um, you know, as sales have kind of flattened over the last year and a half, I've noticed that you all have wanted something a little bit different from me and maybe not necessarily wanted my artwork or gifts that I've created or products. Um, you've, you've wanted more teaching and more uh, video content. So that's kind of been where I'm headed. I'd love to hear your feedback. Many of you I know have purchased from my store. So, and I'm so grateful. But I'm making some changes there. Okay, before we do our background, we've got our little strawberries here. And I'm gonna take the little seeds for our strawberries. Kind of come in and just do a little stamping right there just to get that little seed thing going. Let me clean this off. So I am closing the store. So be on the lookout for some more information about that. It's going to be a big honk and sale, friends. I have a lot of products in my store. So, you know, you can kind of take a look at it now. I also have a series of holiday ornaments, um, hand-painted, really cool holiday ornaments that I've got in my stock, in my stash. You won't see that on the website right now, but they're going to be in, in the sale as well. And I'm basically just going to um, clearance out and sell out everything that I have. That's the goal. Okay, so we've got all of our little bits and pieces here. And then we're just going to go right into some card assembly. Let's have some fun with this. So here is our original inspiration where I did the this background. This this diamond background has kind of like that retro look to it. It and I did cherry red and innocent pink and I really like it, but I feel like it was kind of overtaking. That background was so intense. It was overtaking some of the watercolor elements. So I did another one in Wild Dandelion. Let's just go ahead and Put a little glue on the back here. Got a little connect glue in my little glue thing. I need to open up my card. I used the master layouts die to kind of cut this piece and bring it in a little bit. Hi Sylvia. Sylvia just popped in. Good to see you. And I kind of like that background. Loving the way that looks. Now we're just going to assemble all of our pieces. We've done a little strawberry picking, right? We're going to assemble our pieces. Just kind of create our card. So I am closing the shop. There will be some information coming out about that in late September for the sale. And if you're on my email subscriber list, you'll get a bit, a way bigger discount. I actually don't even publicize, usually don't even publicize the discount. I've got my leaves going this way. 
Um, my daughter just texted me. She just left for class. Um, I don't even publicize the sale in, in social media. I generally like the sales in my shop and things like that to end up being exclusive to people that are on my email list. At least the big honking thing. And, and I'm looking at probably like 25 to 30% off. We'll see. So that's just something that's happening. I'm going to just pop up this strawberry so that I can nest some of my other pieces of leafery underneath. I think I'm going to go sentiment free with this design. Thank you, Gloria, for that sweet comment. Giving me a thumbs up. Thank you. I love that. Apparently that matters, you know, with the algorithm and things. Thumbs ups and all that stuff. I also have super chats and it things like that. If you're and I never really talk about that that much. Look at this leaf ray. I'm loving the way that looks. You've got that contrast between darks and lights, a little bit of the yellow greens, darker greens. We've got that whole washy watercolor look without without with some control. I'm gonna take this little tiny um, tiny strawberry and just kind of nest her just kind of like right there because this is going to go over top. Let's just kind of bring her out. I have all those things on the channel too, like ways to support the channel, ways to support me, these super chats and things. I don't always talk about it. You guys can see it there. That's not really the 100% reason why I'm here and why I um, choose to be in service to you all this way. But look at that. And I love the way, like, because I went and fussy cutted these pieces out, we've got that um, little bit. It's just really right tight to the edge. And all of these embellishments just kind of look so cute. I'm loving the way this card looks. I'm loving it. Look at that watercolor. Let's pull it a little tighter so we can take a look. Let's see what happens with my camera when we come in a little tighter. We can take a look at that watercolor. We've got that washy watercolor look. I'm loving it. Let's come back to our smoothie washes with our watercolor pencil. Hope you got a lot of value out of today's watercolor pencil tutorial. I'm going to pull out just a little bit just to kind of pull in some of the inspiration that we've got here. So this was the original inspiration for the card project. And you can see this is just stamped straight up using that two-step stamping. This is all ink. And I'm loving that. I love that. I love that contrast. I love that look and feel. Then we've got a little bit more of an intense background. Right, with those two colors and I really like that but I thought that that background was kind of taken away a little bit from my watercolor and then we have this I love that the, the wild dandelion background is a little bit less intense and we have it really helps those stamps be the star of the show and it really helps that watercolor kind of pop a little bit more super digging that okay I'm also making some changes. Yes, Wendy said nice for a card kit as a present. Okay, I'm going to pop back to my front camera. Probably going to need to, um, and people are sharing they love the softer pattern. I do too. Love that soft pattern. I, I kind of teased this last week. This pattern, I created this pattern in this set, but it's going to show up a little bit more over the next couple months in the next couple releases. It's a perfect, perfect pattern background stamp for mashing up with some things that are coming. So that's a little teaser, huh? That's a way big little teaser. So, okay friends, so kind of had a little bit of a stamping, chatting, watercolor tutorial today. Super fun with watercolor pencils. Um, I just love using them and it's an option. Many of you, I consider them to be like a gateway. Oh, you know what? I never put the um, sequins on. Oh, well, I'll have to go back and put the sequins on the on the um, card. 
I had them here, but I never put them on. I kind of consider watercolor pencils as a little bit of a gateway supply to get you into watercolor in a more controlled way. So if you're just getting started and you have a set of watercolor pencils, play with some of the techniques that we did today, the smoothie washes. Focus on that application of color, holding the pen, holding the pencil a little bit further out so that you're getting an application of color from the side of the pencil. I recommend that technique with colored pencils too. We've done a couple different colored pencil videos, but if that's something you're interested in, of course, I'm going to bring it back out and we'll do it again um, as well. But watercolor pencils, watercolor's my jam, you all know. Um, watercolor and technology. So watercolor pencils are that gateway into moving into some more advanced techniques in watercolor, in moving into using paints and trying some new things with your paper crafting projects or your painting projects. So I hope you got a lot of value out of this little lesson today. Okay, friends, we've gone a little bit over the hour, but that's okay. It was a pretty fun lesson. Um, I hope you really enjoyed today's tutorial. I will be back next week. I'm looking at Wednesday or Thursday. I'm kind of digging this Wednesday timeline. It really kind of works. It's the middle of the week. It helps us get encouraged to craft our joy into the rest of the week and the weekend. Um, if you're at all interested in anything that I've shared today or you're watching this on the replay and I encourage you to sign up for my email list. I'm never 100% sure if you see things and see my posts in social media. I do posts regularly, but I'm never 100% sure. But the email list and getting the email from me is the prime way to find out when I'm doing the lives, what time, and getting the actual link for coming in to watch. So you can also find information in the link down below related to my classroom at craftyourjoy.com. And I have a free community and a free class over there. I have lots of classes. If you're interested in taking it to another level, I have lots of affordable classes in my classroom. And I encourage you to take a look at that. But you can sign, if you um, sign up for my free community, there's lots of other content in that community that's not shared anywhere else. So super fun and free to you. Okay, I'm seeing everybody say thank you. Great lesson as always. Thank you for teaching. It is my superpower, friends. It is my superpower. So, um, okay. So I hope you all have a really great rest of the day. And don't hesitate to reach out to me if you're diving into using your watercolor pencils or other techniques, trying some other techniques that we've talked about and you need a little bit of help, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I get a lot of emails from you, from all of you, um, direct messages, just reach out. I'm the one that's going to answer you, I promise. Okay, okay, thank you. Everybody's saying such sweet things, sweet, sweet things. Rhonda just shared a set of intense pencils. Get them out and play with them. Same kind of techniques that we talked about today use with your Inktense pencils. The only difference with Inktense is that it's ink and it dries permanent, so you're, no, you're not able to reactivate it. Some nerdy stuff's coming out. I'm trying to say goodbye and all the nerdy chatter about art supplies is coming back out. Okay, friends, um, have a great rest of your week and into the weekend. Here in the U.S., we have a, a long weekend, and it's also my daughter's birthday on Saturday. I'm so excited. She is going to be 20. Can you believe it? 20. My baby is going to be 20. Can't believe it. Okay, friends, have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye now.